Hey, Yvette, there's my girl. Get your ass in here. Hey, y'all, it's Donna. Donna Tubbs? We haven't seen you in so long, we thought you'd run off and found yourself a man. Do I look like I've got a husband and an overweight stepson? Mm -mm. Now give me a drink. It's ladies' night. <laughs> She's back. Ugh, enough about Robert. How's your ex? Girl, we still fighting over custody of the kids. Really? Yeah, he still wants me to take him. <laughs> Men, they're only good for one thing. Opening, Opening jars. I haven't had a pearl onion in years. Now we don't need men at all! Woo! <laughs> Girl, yes! Junior boys shouldn't be rubbing on their dad's butt like that. Ooh, baby, is that you? Mm-hmm. Well, you're in a good mood. Hey, how was tonight's episode of Grey's Anatomy? Moon River! And go! Eight point three five. Ah, I'll never make it out of the ghetto. Hey, fellas, check out my new campaign poster. My slogan is, what can Brown do for you? You should change that slogan to, yes, we can ham. <laughs> I wouldn't be laughing if I was you. As far as anyone's concerned, you're just Junior's little brother. If he's a big loser, you're a big loser. Oh, Jiminy Christmas, you're right. I'm going to be judged by what my brother does. Just like those brothers who made the Matrix. So, you have a vagina? No, that's my brother. Chin's up, Tubby. I'm your new campaign manager. Thanks, but I don't need a campaign manager. The school newspaper begs to differ. Listen up. First, let's talk demographics. Oliver's got the cool kid vote locked up. But that's only 3% of the school. We're gonna target your base. The losers. I'm talking about the nerds, the band geeks, the exchange students, the special ed kids, and the teen moms. Now we gotta put you on the attack. Well, I don't wanna do anything hurtful. Well, okay, John Carey. Tell me what I gotta do. All right, first thing, what are Oliver's greatest strengths? He's captain of the football team? Otherwise known as... He's also very handsome. Therefore? But he does well with the ladies. Oh, so we turn his strengths into weaknesses. Now you're getting it. Wow, you're smart. Say it as a weakness. I'm a... Nerd. Jew. Nerd. Who had the fried chicken in the bread bucket? I'll give you one guess. Right here, dude. You know who would enjoy this? Donna. But there was a flood at the school library. She sure came home happy after your TV night. So happy that she tickled my, what the Native Americans call, maze hole. She didn't come to our TV night. She called and said she was feeling under the weather. Wait a minute. That don't add up. That's queer. If she wasn't with you, where'd she go that night? That, my friend, is the $25,000 pyramid. Where is she tonight? Come on up in here! Honey mama. mama! Damn Skippy! Oh we up jumped the devil! Don't squeeze too tight, or else somebody's gonna have to call the fart police. Those filling station nachos are not agreeing with your Auntie Mama. <laughs> I'm outrageous! <laughs> <laughs> now stop all this scrapping, dipping and dapping, don't know what's happening. Now, who's this little one? Donna, don't tell me you went and got yourself knocked up by Anthony Anderson. <laughs> you nasty girl. Hi, strange lady. My name is Cleveland Brown Jr. And I'm LeVar Brown. Mwah. But you can call me Freight Train. Oh, well, chill to to you. Hire me a couple Chinese, because we building a train track right here. Auntie Mama, you should have told me you were coming. Girl, you know Auntie Mama can't be tied down, unless this one's doing the time. Uh-oh! I'm outrageous! Hey, Auntie Mama! Khalid 
Evelyn Brown, as I live and breathe. Look at you, all grown up and unconventionally sexy, mustache all putting Will Chamberlain's to shame. Honey, I should know. I was number 8,433 and 11,760. Oh, I'm outrageous. Auntie Mama, we need to talk. Mm-hmm, you know we will, girlfriend. I want to hear all about the young memes up in your life. But right now, Auntie Mama's off to the powder room to see what all these thoughts are about. <laughs> Maybe this Thanksgiving won't be so bad after all. I'm gonna clean up this broken glass. Sorry I tossed him the knife, but I wanted him to kill you. <laughs> I can see on your mama's penis. Honey, mama's penis! Let's play a game. Everybody say something weird about themselves. I'll start. I don't have nails on my small toes. Your turn, honey, mama. I don't understand why a no good team like the Lions always gets to play on Thanksgiving. But I still let them pile up on me in the locker room. I love a good sack. Auntie Mama! I'm outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> See that cookie? A lady who loves football. That's a real woman. No offense. That's an ugly apron. Whoops. Sometimes they jump on you. What's wrong with you, Cyberpuss? You look lower than Clint Eastwood's testicles. We had a pretty good run. Had Angie Dickinson, didn't we, boys? Oh, is this yours? I'm gonna need a closer look. Oh, man. You wouldn't believe the horrifying and terrifying nightmare I had. Another nightmare? Mm-hmm. Oh, you poor thing. Don't you see he's just tricking you into babying him? Cleveland, he's a little boy. Let him get used to our new family. But he doesn't need to sleep in our bed. That's where we do things to each other. Dirty things. Disrespectful things. Things that make it hard for me to look you in the eye the next day. Your sweet talk is not gonna work on me tonight. Mama, I'm cold. Come back to bed. Cleveland, he's five. Exactly. Let's just go for it. He won't know what we're doing. He'll think we're wrestling. Doggy wrestling. <laughs> Sweet jammies. Thanks. They're all so flame retarded. Excuse me, Roberta? What do you want? I need you to do me a favor. Uh, check under my bed for <clears throat> monsters? Cleveland Jr., get out of here. You're too old to be believing in monsters. Well, I know that intellectually, but phobia is not always rational. That's what makes them so... <laughs> Cleveland, can you dry this for me? Why don't you have your boyfriend Rollo do it? Please, Cleveland. He's my son, and he's adjusting as best he can. But we promised in our wedding vows that we would have sex every night. What? No, no, we didn't. It was implied. Look, I'm serious. Donna, this has been going on too long. I'm your husband. All right, all right, fine. I'll talk to him tonight. Good. Oh, to be a fly on the wall for that conversation. Oh, this is gonna be good. Hey, what's that awful smell? Oh, it's on my little hand things. Is that... Oh, gross! Oh, now why would I land on a steaming pile of... You are not going out at midnight on Christmas Eve. Try and stop me. Ow! Uh. Cleveland, nobody's been able to track Robert down for months. Why don't you just be a normal stepdad, buy his love, and move on? Nope. I'm gonna give Rollo the only present that's gonna restore his faith in Christmas. His father. What the hell?
Just hear those sleigh bells jingling, ring, ting, tingling too. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Outside the snow is falling and friends are calling you. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, let's go. Let's look at the show. We're riding in a wonderland of snow. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, it's grand. Just holding your hand. Everybody decent? Doughboy? What the hell, Debar, are you doing here? I need to talk to you about your son. Ma'am, I think I saw the Atlanta Hawks out there. <gasps> Look, Rollo knows you've been lying to him about being an FBI agent, and it's ruined Christmas for him. So? The Beach Boys' Brian Wilson? His dad made him take a crocky in a cardboard box under the Christmas tree in front of the entire family. Is that true? That's what I heard. What the hell? Well, if so, Brian Wilson defecated in that cardboard box because he loved his father. Just like all boys love their fathers, no matter how bad they treat them. So I'm gonna dress up like Santa and bring you to our house as my gift to Rollo. And if you won't do it, you're not worth the box Brian Wilson dropped a little deuce coop in. Get your hands off me. Look, Robert. This Christmas, the best present you can give Rollo is just being present. Don't hang your homonyms on me, though, boy. I thought what you said was beautiful. Thank you. Merry Christmas, whore. Leading by one, thanks to a great outing by pitcher Miles Duggan. Duggan's a junior, but only because he was held back this year for what he claims is a learning disability called, get this, dyslexia. <laughs> Gesundheit. Look, a black baseball player that doesn't speak Spanish. Rollo, what are you talking about? That's rare. Come on, Junior. There you go. That's Cleveland Brown Jr. wearing the original jersey his father made famous. After 25 years, Hot Brown number nine is back at the plate. Here's the pitch and ball one, little outside. Good eye. Ball two. This type of excitement is what makes the game great. Anything can happen. The next pitch could be a strike, a hit, an out, ball three, or even a foul. Here we go. Ball three. Wow, I wonder what will happen next. Hard to say. Here we go. The pitch and ball four. He walks slowly. A respectable, if underwhelming, return to the field for the legendary number nine. Ah, all right. And here's the deaf powerhouse, Oliver, I can't hear you, Wilkerson. Come on, show me what you got. It's showtime. The plane, the plane, that ball is flying. Oh, hello, Missy Ladybug. Ron Jr. Run. Double play, what was Brown thinking? Ha <laughs> ha, Junior stinks. Good space work, son. Looks like number nine is a hot brown mess. Brown number nine makes you hate the game itself. The growler should retire that jersey again. Retire it to the can. Gordy, we've talked about this. You can't say that on the air. So what? They'll just bleep it. Brown number nine sucks. 